Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what we have here. We have a brand new Yamaha Multimedia Surround Sound Receiver. This is an RX V485 uh, Yamaha receiver. It has 5.1 uh, channels, HDMI, 4K Ultra HD compatible, Dolby Vision, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi certified. So I ordered this receiver to replace my existing receiver, which is also a Yamaha, but this is an RX V373. And this receiver has served me very well for many years, but it has been having some problems, especially with the arc connection to the TV. And so I figured it's about time to upgrade to this new receiver. And I'll show you how to install that today. Okay, so I have my existing receiver hooked up to a number of things. I do have the um, Comcast Xfinity um, box here. I have a Blu-ray player. I do have a uh, PS3, a Wii, and a PS2. Okay, so the open box. What do we have? We have the remote here. We have uh, this little device uh, helps uh, test the sound. We'll go ahead and cover that. Uh, we have the manual, and it looks like an AM, FM type of antenna there, a wire, and the receiver's right here. We'll go ahead and take that out of the box. So this is the back of the new receiver, and this is going to look very similar to many of the receivers you can purchase today. You're either going to have little lugs or little clips for your speakers, which are here. We have the uh, front right, front left, center, Surround sound right, surround sound left. Now those, uh, the surround sound speakers go in back of you. We also have a plug for the subwoofer. Now this receiver can also receive AM, FM radio, and I showed you when I opened up the box, uh, the antennas for those, and that's where you plug in your FM antenna and your AM antenna. So the rest of your connections are devoted to your audio and video. So today most AV connections are done with HDMI cables and here you have four inputs, one, two, three, four, and one output. You may also have connections for composite or RCA connections as you see here. Now these were standard in the past but they're becoming rarer and rarer and actually the TV I have in this room doesn't actually have any composite inputs. The only output connection for your composite plugs is this one monitor out and that basically any video you, uh, you input into your receiver can go out to your TV through this connection. Now you don't actually have to send any audio signals to your TV from your receiver. Instead your receiver is sending all those to your speakers and bypassing your TV. You may also have a connection for an optical audio cable which goes here and we'll talk about that later. So the newest receivers can also be connected to the internet. Here's, here's a hardline connection that you can connect to the internet but this one also you can connect via Wi-Fi and these are the antennas for that. Now the speakers for my system are actually hardwired and they just go straight from the speakers out to the back of the receiver. But many receivers, including this one, are now Bluetooth compatible. So you could purchase uh, wireless speakers and, it can, and those can communicate wirelessly to your receiver. So the simplest way to connect your receiver to your TV is simply by connecting all your AV uh, devices like your Xfinity, your Blu-ray player, your uh, PS3, etc into uh, your receiver and then outputting the signals to your TV. And for older receivers that's how it was done. However today you have a little more choice. So the newest receivers can actually communicate back and forth from your TV to your receiver. And that is done through this HDMI ARC connection. Now this is the HDMI out so all the signals do go out. But this ARC connection can even input audio signals from your TV and your TV can actually control your receiver to a certain extent. And audio signals from your TV can also be inputted through this optical connection here. 
And this could be very important with smart TVs, since smart TVs have a lot of apps that uh, bring in signals to the TV. You want those signals to be sent to your receiver so you can have the full surround sound features. It also allows you to have many more connections than just these four HDMI connections here. Now here's the back of my TV, and your TV might have very similar connections with Here's the coaxial cable input, here's a uh, internet connection, but you also have inputs, HDMI inputs also, so one, two, three, four. And here's the optical input as well. And for this TV, the HDMI 4 input is also the ARC connection, so you can connect this connection to your ARC on your receiver. So as I said before, for my particular receiver, I have four HDMI inputs. But for this TV, there's also three additional HDMI inputs I could utilize. And anything I plug here, the audio from these connections could be sent through the R connection back to my receiver. And I could have surround sound with these connections. And that's what I'm going to do with my particular system. This HDMI plug is directly from my Xfinity box. This one is from my Blu-ray player. And so those are connected directly into my TV. And so the, the audio from these connections will be sent from the ARC into my receiver to my speakers. And so that's what I'm going to be doing first. This is the other end of the plug that's connected to the ARC plug in my TV. So I'm just going to stick that to the output arc here. And so any audio that comes from my Xfinity box or my Blu-ray player will go into the TV. The video signal will stay in my TV, but the audio will be outputted to the receiver and out to my speakers. And this is the preferred way of doing it. Um, the arc connection has dual communication, so your receiver can talk to your uh, TV and your TV can talk to your receiver. But if you don't have an ARC plug connection on your TV, you still might have an optical audio connection uh, plug in your TV. And that's another way of sending audio signals from your TV to your receiver. Now the plugs for these uh, optical cables look something like that. They usually come with a little cap that you would remove. And they have a certain shape that you can only plug in a certain way. And so you would, uh, let's see if I can get this correctly. And so in this case, you would plug it in there and plug it into your, um, your, your optical connection to, in your TV. And then you could share the audio coming into your TV to your receiver. Now one thing to note about these ARC connections is that you do want to purchase a high-speed HDMI cable. There's many different uh, HDMI cables out there. The older ones are typically not high speed. And if you're not sure if your cable is high speed or not, very often if they're high speed, they will say it on the cable itself. As you can see here, high speed HDMI. Now the next cable I'm gonna plug into my receiver is for the PS3, which is also HDMI compatible. Now I could plug this into my uh, the third HDMI slot in my TV and then uh, that would be sent through the arc to my receiver but in my case I just prefer to stick it in HDMI 1 into my receiver. Now when I play my PS3 I will have to switch the input in my receiver so it knows to look for the audio in my HDMI 1 input and all the video coming from my PS3 will go out through the HDMI output and the ARC connection into my TV. Now I also have to plug in my Wii and PS2 into the receiver. Now those are composite connections. They actually are not HDMI compatible. And I could uh, plug them in here. Uh, I would not be able to output it to my TV since my TV doesn't have any composite inputs. I would have to send out the video through uh, the optical cable. But the output video from those games would not be high definition. So what I did a while back is I got an RCA to HDMI converter. And so I plugged both those games into that converter 
and uh, now I could output the video signal high definition. And so this HDMI plug here is from that converter. So I'm just going to plug this directly into HDMI 2. And I have a switch connected uh, to that converter so I could switch back and forth from my Wii and PS2. And both those inputs would be HDMI 2 on my receiver. So the only thing I have to do now is plug in my speakers. I can go ahead and plug in my subwoofer right here. And then I just have to connect my smaller uh, speakers, the uh, fronts, this round sound, and the center. Uh, this particular one I labeled as FRs for front right. And you just untwist these little terminals here. There's two wires per speaker. You kind of stick it in here like that and tighten it up. Okay, so the receiver's all hooked up and working properly. I am getting sound, but I do want to kind of show you the menu of this particular receiver. Now, depending on what you get, if you get a Yamaha, it will look similar to this, but if you get another type of receiver, it, uh, you may will probably see a different type of menu. Now, I do want to show you that if you do use the ARC um, uh, connections, you do want to set up, in this case, uh, you want to set up the ARC both in your receiver and your TV. You need to tell your TV and your receiver that you are using ARC and want that functionality. In this case, I just go to HDMI um, uh, menu option and then go down to ARC and in this case it's on. I could turn it off or on and there's a number of different settings here you could read up about. Uh, in your manual for your particular receiver. Now I said in the beginning I'd also talk about this little microphone uh, component here which Yamaha provides for um, all their receivers. Now this is basically to help you balance the sound of your speakers. Now everybody has a different setup for their speakers and sit in a different location, uh, different size rooms, etc. This helps you uh, kind of deal and uh, with that and helps you balance your speakers appropriately. In this case, it just gets plugged in right here. You want to string this out and put this uh, mic, mic to a location where you're going to be sitting and observing your TV. And in this case, it says uh, just start. And so if you just hit start, it'll go through a number of cycles, it'll test each speaker, and you'll hear sounds, and eventually it will balance uh, your speakers based on the location. You put your little microphone and uh, kind of optimize the sound in your particular room. There you go. Well, it looks like the receiver works really well. I hope this video helped you out. And if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and maybe even consider subscribing to my channel. I will have many, many videos to come. Bye-bye.